OK, so here we have a ZXCM5 installation. It's got a single virtual server and pool called Web Service. If we look at the configuration for the Web Service virtual server, you'll see that I have a rule configured, and the rule is called VM Pool Control. If we go in there and have a look at it, um, you'll see the first thing I do is I check for um, is I load in the SLM conformance figures. I then test to see if the SLM class is less than 90% conforming. If that is the case, I'm going to use Java Run to launch a Java extension. My Java extension is called Comzeus VMware VM Pool Control, and it takes two arguments. The first is Power On to let the Java extension know I intend to power on a VMware image and it takes the name of the pool, web service, and the extension will figure out which node is available to power on. So if we look at the extension now, you'll see that I have it in here, Comzeus VMware VM Pool Control, and it takes one initialization parameter called Zeus Home, which tells it where to find the ZXTM installation. If we look in extra files, you'll also see I have a VM Pool Control.cfg which is where the Java extension loads its configuration from. So taking a look at that, I have a VI URL, user and pass, which tell me how to connect to the virtual infrastructure. I have a VI data center, which tells it the data center name I'm interested in configuring. I have the ZXTM URL, which tells me how to connect to the SOAP interface of the ZXTM to reconfigure that once I've powered on the machine. And I have a seconds value, which is the number of seconds the Java extension should wait between power, making the power change and informing ZXTM. So the next the next line is, is the actual pool line. And you have as many of these as you like. I've just got one called Web Service, and it has three nodes: VMWeb one, two, three. So VMWeb one is powered on, VMWeb two is powered on, and VMWeb three is powered off. And the other value you see in there is the IP import name: VMWeb ones. 21 and VMWeb2 is 22. So if we compare that to the pools configuration, you'll see I've got two nodes in there, um, 10150.21 and 10150.22, which map to VMWeb1 and VMWeb2. Okay, and if we look at the virtual infrastructure, you'll see that VMWeb1 and VMWeb2 are powered on, while VMWeb3 is suspended. Okay, so that's that's the setup. Let's um, let's have a look at it. So if, if I load the uh, page from the virtual server, you'll see currently we've only got VMWeb one and VMWeb two active. Okay, so I want to show you how this rule works. And rather than load it up and and exceed the SLM, I'm just going to comment out the SLM check. So on every request, it always run. It always runs the Java extension. Okay, so modify the rule. Click update. And save it. I'll go to the diagnose page and the event log so you can see what, what it logs when it runs. Reload the page. Okay, it hasn't hasn't done it yet because it uses a threaded class so it makes a call asynchronously. If we look at that now you'll see this initiated the power on and you can see in the recent tasks that VMWeb3 has just been powered on and just completed. Look back at the event log now and you'll see that the Java extension has logged several things it logged initiating power on for VMWeb3. Once it succeeded, it logged VMware command succeeded power on VMWeb3. And then it said it was going to adding node to VMWeb3 to pull web service. And then it went to sleep for five seconds. Okay, that's probably finished by now. If we update the, the log, click display again. Yep, so it's ended the power options. If we look at the audit log now, you'll see that it has added the node to the web service pool. And if we go and look at the actual uh, pool now, you should see it's say three nodes are in there. So pools, web service, and it's got three nodes. Reload this, and we've got one, three, and two, all active and running. 